Hi, my name is Mani Ali Kani. I am Dean and Professor at CITOR Academy and I'd like to welcome you to another session of CITOR channel. The topic of today's discussion is how bracket characteristic can affect two-couple system. If you remember from previous discussion, for example, when we were talking about the position of the V-band, in all those examples, we assumed that the two brackets or two attachment on the adjacent teeth are same exact width and they are exactly same height. And then we will describe how the changing in position of the V-band produce different moments and forces in our system. But what happens if the width of the bracket are different? Is it going to affect the two-couple system? This is very important because when we are selecting the brackets for our patients, we need to pay attention to these details. So the question is, if I'm having two teeth adjacent to each other, one of them has a wider bracket and one of them has a narrower bracket. And still I follow the principles of two-couple system. Would I get the same result? Let's look at the question. Assume we have two brackets. One is narrow and one is wider. In the left side of this picture, we are using the same angle of activation. It means the wire in compared with the slot makes exactly the same angle that is alpha one and alpha two. So alpha one and alpha two are equal. If we engage the wire, because the slot of the brackets are the same, angle of engagement should be almost the same. When we engage inside the bracket, a couple appear in the system. You remember from the uh, discussion on the couple, of course, when the width of the bracket is wider, if the angle of activation is stays the same, you're expecting the higher magnitude of the moment appear in our system. Now, assume we put these two brackets on two adjacent tooth. Central V-band, two bracket, one is wider, one is narrower, the height is the same, and the angulation is the same. What are you expecting to happen in both bracket? When I'm engaging the wire inside the bracket, the narrower bracket produces a smaller couple in compared with the wider bracket. Therefore, the moment in the one that has a wider bracket should be more than the moment that appears in the smaller bracket. Now, if the system is in equilibrium, you will see that, okay, we have a larger moment, we have a smaller moment, and the system need to be in equilibrium, but they are not in equilibrium how we can make the equilibrium, of course. There should be another moment in the system that helps the smaller moment to be equal to the larger moment. Where is that moment? It appears as two vertical forces, that appears as a third couple in the system, and that third couple system produces a moment exactly the same direction as a smaller moment, as you can see in this picture. You may ask that, okay, this is correct about the rigid wire. How about the flexible wire? What happened if I put two brackets, one narrow, one larger, but with the same angulation, and I insert a, a flexible wire. Would this happen again? Means that would we have unequal moments? Well, let's think about the answer. Do you think if we put this wire, the wire receive a central V-band curve, or it would be a little bit asymmetric? It would be a little bit asymmetric. The bracket that is wider make the wire to bend a little bit more and therefore the peak of the bend is closer to the bracket that is wider. Again, you have a differential moment in your system. One is producing bigger moment, one is producing a smaller moment, therefore you need a vertical forces appear in your system to help the smaller moments to catch with the larger moment. Two couple system therefore is not just a property of the wire. The attachment can affect the two couple system significantly. If you remember, for example, in one couple system, uh, we had one bracket and one button in two couple system, we have two brackets, same V-band produce a completely different result. So you can see the importance of attachment in our system. Now let's look at another characteristic of the brackets. How about we change the angulation of the bracket? Again, let's look at this example. If the angulation of the both bracket is the same, the width is the same, height is the same, you will expecting that the moments that appear in both sides would be the same. And if you are putting a central V-band, everything is clear. There is no vertical forces in your system. But what happened if you angulated one of the bracket? Why we want to do that? That's a different question, but assume we did. 
we angulated one of the bracket and still we are putting a central V band, would the result will be the same? Of course not. Why? Well, the angle of activation of the wire would be different in these two brackets. Now, if you are engaging this wire inside both brackets, what you're going to see? One of the tooth will receive a higher moment, the one that has a higher angle of activation. One of the tooth will receive a smaller moment, the one that has a smaller angle of activation. And therefore, vertical forces will start to appear in your system. I hope you enjoy our session today. Please, if you did not subscribe to a CTOR channel, go ahead and subscribe. And please don't forget to press the like button. Thank you.